Well, good day, all. Wow, what a crazy day, right? Uh, this is Ira Epstein with your Spider ETF stock market review for Thursday evening, November 10th, 2022. All right, my friends, just look behind you. Even ARC up $4. That's a 10% plus gain in one day. Yes, that's nice. I mean, look at the green on the board behind me. There's no red. It's more than Christmas. Christmas is green and red. So what happened today? All right. By now, you know that it's all about the CPI and we got falling numbers, not crashing. Numbers that came in softer than the expectations and the market is extrapolating that a peak in inflation has been seen and that the Fed will not have to go with 75 basis point hikes any longer. There'll be something in the 25 to 50 range. The market doesn't know how long the Fed will have to go, but it's assuming with a rally like today that the worst is behind the market. That is the market assumption. Do I know if that's right or wrong? I don't know. What I can tell you is I took the opportunity today to create a report. And how I like to do my reports, and I'll show it to you. This report is a currency report. It's very important because so much of the headwind that we have seen in the stock market, the company earnings and so on, has to do with the dollar index. So I did a special report today on the dollar index. And in the dollar index, what I have done is I talk at great length about the seasonality, what's going on in the markets, where I see the markets moving, so on and so forth. For you to see the report, just at the any point during this video, you'll see a, up on the top, if you move your cursor, a way to give a click, go in and see the report. You can also go to our website, irapstein.com. It's under research called the Currency Report, the Dollar Index. You'll see it there. So let's take a look, if we could now, at the markets. And let's go to the LIT. Isn't it amazing yesterday you came down, filled the gap, and today you take off again to the upside. So the trend is up in lithium until you take out the 6936 area. You're in a key resistance area of the 100-day and the 200-day averages with the Bollinger Band. Do I think the market will keep going from there? No. This is a logical spot within a day, three days, whatever it is. The market will say this is some resistance, I think. Do I know? Well, I know as much as you, maybe. Maybe a little more in the chart. And you're in a resistance zone. You're overbought. It was a great run and enjoy it. In meta, same thing. You lost the embedded reading. You carried to the 18-day average. It doesn't have to go any further. Because meta let go of, what, 11,000 or 13,000 people, whatever it is, it doesn't mean this market's suddenly bullish. The market, the whole market suddenly bullish because the market thinks, and I use the word thinks, that inflation has peaked in America. That's the thinking today. And I'm not one to fight that. I wanted to, so I'm, I'm with that camp that I want to see that it has peaked. What, what the question is, is the trajectory and speed that it falls because the Fed will not be able to put up with a slow pace of decline. It wants a faster trajectory. Uh, if you were watching Kramer today, he, he went bananas on TV. The whole cause of inflation is trucking. He was talking about C.H. Robinson and the backups of it. Uh, he knows more than me, so I, I, I don't know that I accept that. But that's what he does. He's a showman. So the market comes up fighting its battle right through here. I get it, lost the embedded reading, but this isn't an uptrend. You have a lower, low, higher high, and you've gone back to that line in the sand. When you look at Apple, suddenly what was terrible is good just because the dollar has peaked out. Gee, did the problems in China change overnight? I don't think so. Um, did Foxconn rehire everybody and they're gonna make up the difference? I don't think so. so it's nice that these things occur, and I see how the analysts look at it, and I'm the first to tell you, the trend is now up. Higher lows, higher highs. The risk in buying tonight is $10, that's a lot. Back down to uh, 134.58 if you get long there. 
objective if it continues up. 151.94. I seriously doubt it can get over these numbers. Okay, and you'll see the people that came out. Dan Ives today of Wedbush came out, and uh, I think he was uh, doing things on Apple and Tesla, and I was watching others. So they're all still bullish markets, but they're lowering the numbers that they're in. I find that fascinating. Disney can't even get out of the way of itself. I, I told you that the chairman there has got to be let go. They need, they need new management. You can't even get back over the Bollinger Band. This is pretty bad action. XLF, powerful action, right on up in the financial services here. Why? The financial services are going to say, hey, we can keep the lending going at a really high rate. And with this happening, we don't have to pay much on deposits with us. In XLI, you can see how the market's fighting a battle at the upper band, but there's a story here. We're up to the upper bands. Would I ever tell a client to buy at an upper Bollinger Band? I make you this promise, no. Would I tell clients, this is where you liquidate. You use this rally to get some cash, rotate to other things if you're bullish, yes. I'm looking for the resistance. It's the first challenge of XSD back to the 200 day average on this chart. This chart goes back into June. You buy it. I don't want it. I want, I want out of it. You, I'm using this rally to get rid of things going in the year end that maybe aren't so good. The home builders exploded to the upside. You see that? Powerful. Why? Mortgage rates fell half a basis point today. But is that enough to get the home building going? No. But psychologically, that was it. I, I can just hear the mortgage brokers now. That was it, and they may be very right. We may have seen the peak on fixed rate mortgages. A very strong possibility. Yes, that is friendly that. But I, do I want to see my clientele buy over a Bollinger Band into a 200-day average? I don't. I want to see them liquidate into that. Energy didn't go anywhere. Pretty ugly. Energy's acting like it can't get its head out here. Gold, well, it's directly related to the dollar. It, for the first time, has got something since the start of the Ukraine war, when it took off to the upside, that it's hung its hat on that's working. And that is that the dollar has bearish right now. And that is kicking this market up. But I'm going to repeat, I don't care how high it goes. I don't care if it makes its way to 168. If it's over the Bollinger Band, it does it without a guy like me. SLV, if you were next to me, I'd be telling you this is where you kick out your positions. Whether you do or don't, that's up to you. The odds of staying over this, less than 5%. And the first challenge is you come up to this a problem. Lewis, can you fix that on the screen, please? Next, CopEx. You can see how the market is moving up through here. It keeps riding the band. Remember I told you the Gorilla Glue trade. I named it because it's when a market latches on to a Bollinger Band. Somebody knew something. This market's been strong with copper. Uh, with, with rather China in a full lockdown in many, many industrial cities, and it doesn't stay down, it goes up. There's, there's something else brewing here that's very positive for copper. Could it make its way to 35, 37? It could, it's overbought. I, I certainly am not gonna join in on the parade. TLT, I wouldn't be surprised if you get to 98, 94 and run into a brick wall at that price. Uh, UUP down, but I'm not going to discuss this because I do that in my special video report on the dollar today and the same with FXE. So I'm going to repeat another special report for you. Take advantage of it. Go to our website, irapstein.com, and all you need to do is go under research. You'll see it. Give it a click. Enjoy it. I'm Ira. See you tomorrow.